eyes look a bit like, you know, fairy eyes or something. Yes, it is, but it's also kind of a, a, a gentle version of a punk girl. And then you'd lock it up with the bourgeois lip. Exactly. <laughs> We wanted it to look very chic, very clean, off the face. And Joseph liked the idea of very like her, his woman being very done. But at the same time, I wanted to make it a little bit more modern. For a designer as young as Joseph Altazara, everything old will always look new again. But it takes someone with a special talent to give those blasts from the past as much dynamic energy as he did tonight. It kind of started with the idea of Kate Moss in the 90s, like that parka over the bias cut dress, was really something that I was thinking about at the very beginning. How women dress and what they need. It was a little bit more of an idea of a wardrobe. It was, in a way, a redo of Marc Jacobs' grunge collection from 20 years ago. It was harder than Marc Jacobs' grunge. I was really surprised by it. I thought there was just a lot more bread and butter, I guess you'd say. I love his tailoring, and it was really fun to see the tailoring translate to the outerwear. I think it's a very, very smart move to show parkas during the coldest winter on record. The parkas looked great, and I think everybody walked out of there wanting one. There's something really great and sensual about having essentially a nightgown underneath a parka. The clothes had so much character. I loved his play on the on the Argyle, and then it sort of turned into this kind of weird quadrophenia plaid. Love the party dresses at the end. Some of those beautiful silk dresses with the buckles. This, I think, said, I can tailor things. I can make things that seem like you've had them before, but they're much more nuanced than you've had them before. That was a canny collection, because it was both very commercial, and that you actually wanted it piece by piece, and it was very editorial. So it gave you both, and that's very rare in a young designer. 